Hey everybody, my name is Mike Montgomery and in today's video, I'd like to show you how I built this DIY mid-century modern bed with metal legs on Modern Builds. Welcome everybody to the shed. My first step in building this queen sized bed was to break down all of the three quarter inch plywood that I'll be using to create the apron or the border of the platform. If you're interested in free plans for this project, I'll leave a link down in the description for every size bed. Next, I cut these six inch wide apron pieces to length using my circular saw and a 12 inch speed square. I cut a two x four to go with each apron piece and these are slightly shorter. That way there's room to screw on and attach the brackets later. After that, I used an eighth inch drill bit to pre-drill everywhere that I'll be screwing these two x fours onto the back side of the aprons. Doing this is gonna create a ledge on the inside of the apron pieces that the slats and mattress will rest on. And I'm using two inch wood screws so they don't go through the face of the plywood. I made these pieces so that the inside dimensions of my frame will be an inch and a half longer and wider than queen standard. My mattress is a tiny bit oversized and it gives room for bedding. Only the outside face of this plywood is gonna be visible, but I sanded everything with 150 grit here. And while I apply this finish, I'd like to give a big thanks to the sponsor of today's episode, Squarespace. Now that's multitasking. Squarespace is your one-stop shop to build your own website. And the best part is you need zero website building experience. If you can upload files and drag and drop text blocks, you are well on your way to a one-of-a-kind website. Squarespace's designer templates look great on desktop, tablet, and mobile, no matter where customers find you. And they are packed with awesome features like unlimited products on Squarespace stores. And right now, if you follow the link in my description, that's squarespace.com slash modern builds, you can build out your entire Squarespace store before entering any of your credit card info. And then when it's time to make your website live, make sure and use the code modern builds for 10% off your first site. I broke down this second sheet of plywood to create the slats that the mattress will rest on. You could also use one by six boards. These are the same size. And now seemed like a great time to lay everything out and to make sure that this was going to assemble as planned. And these cool metal legs slash brackets that I'm gonna be using to put this whole thing together are made by a company called Semi-Exact. And full disclosure, I am involved and invested in this company. This is the DIY box frame leg kit and it's available for pre-order right now at just under 200 bucks. Now, instead of me just using these or instead of me overselling them, I thought it would be a cool idea to show you what goes into making these, not just to show that I really do think these are worth it, but to give you all the information if you wanna tackle welding something similar. So let's get started. The semi-exact box frame leg kit is built out of 3 8 inch plate steel. So I went to my local yard and I picked up a four foot by four foot panel. Right now, prices for all materials are up, but I paid a 300% markup for this plate steel, and it was just under 250 bucks. I used a whole lot of cutoff wheels and my angle grinder to cut the pieces for my 12 inch tall legs. I'm gonna have to weld these pieces at 90 degrees instead of bending them like the semi-exact legs. It's important that these pieces I'm cutting are at 90 degrees. Not only is it gonna be the reference for our two leg pieces, it'll also act as the shelf for our wood apron. Taking this notch out of the corner is gonna make everything way easier. Don't skip it. Cutting all of this with an angle grinder took a long time and these last pieces that I'm making are going to create the inside corner bracket that we use to screw into our apron. The next day, I went over to Maker Ranch so that I could use the welding setup, and I started by grinding and cleaning up all of my metal. A flap disc is my go-to for this. You'll see I've got two size leg pieces, and one takes the thickness of the other into account because of this butt joint. If you don't know already, some good 90 degree magnet clamps are the secret to an enjoyable welding process. They're so handy, and I'll leave a couple links down below. I started by throwing on some heavy tacks along this butt joint, and then I decided to run a bead to connect those points. I made sure to reference and use the right settings for the material and wire I was using, but for some reason, it seemed like it was burning too hot and I was really struggling getting a clean bead. Not to mention, I hadn't welded in a long time and I knew my technique was terrible. I almost don't even wanna show you this first weld. It is so ugly, but it's been a while since I've welded. 
We can only go up from here. Thankfully, my buddy Brett McAfee was over at the ranch and helped me get everything dialed in. The advice he gave me was to do a bunch of individual tacks that all met together rather than trying to run one consistent bead. This took longer to weld, but it saved me so much time grinding and cleaning everything up, so I'd say it was super worth it. Look who it is, Rachel Metz, nice. and we're gonna weld. If I'm being honest, I should shout out Rachel because her welds ended up being slightly cleaner than mine. And also just shout out Brett because this technique worked great. 1-800. I clamped some scrap two by four blocks into place. That way I had a good positive stop whenever I was welding these corner brackets in place. Using these positive spacers really worked great because I knew that my original corners were square and 90. So as long as I kept referencing those, everything else would be too. And in hindsight, I shouldn't have spring clamped everything in. That way I could get these plywood pieces out easier. Pretty good. Always make sure that you're using a grinding disc, not a cutoff wheel to clean up any of your welds. These are way thicker, so they're less likely to break and awesome for removing bulk material. Then I switched over to a flap disc to clean everything up. Anytime you're drilling through still, it's great to use cutting oil, but I didn't have any, so I just sacrificed this bit, knowing it was gonna go dull. I applied two coats of flat white clean metal primer, and I just called it. I thought the color looked fine. I didn't see any point of doing another couple of coats of flat white on top. I definitely wasn't nervous, but I was very excited for assembly. I had no idea if these leg brackets were gonna slide in and work well, and they turned out to be perfect. I screwed the perimeter of my platform together and then threw on some slats, and it was extra sturdy. These joints felt really strong, and I am very happy with how things are looking. My DIY legs are far from perfect, but I think they look killer. And seeing that got me excited to try out the actual semi-exact DIY box frame leg kit. These went together just as well, but slid in easier. And after that, I attached a 90 degree bracket to each end of my center support. Next, I spaced out all of my slats evenly and then screwed them into place. And it turned out this platform was very sturdy. All right, now let's build the headboard. I had a 24 inch by eight foot long piece of plywood left over from earlier after cutting all of the six inch apron pieces. So I cut that to length for my headboard. I cut mine so it would stick out six inches on either side of my platform. Then I grabbed a gallon paint can and marked a radius on each corner, cutting it out with a jigsaw. I did my best to cut perfect on the line, but smoothed and eased everything out with my random orbit sander and applied a couple coats of satin water-based finish. And these are the headboard brackets that come with the semi-exact kit. They put the headboard at the perfect angle and there is no drilling required. And with that, the DIY box frame bed is complete. All in all, I am stoked with how this project came out. I pretty much already knew what it would look like, but I did improvise a little bit while I was building. I really like how I extended the headboard out a bit and added a few gentle radiuses to match the corners on the legs. And speaking of the legs, all of the afters are using the semi-exact version. These are incredibly high quality, super uniform, and links will be down in the description. I'm really excited to see how you guys improvise and modify the design of this kit and make your project unique. Make sure to tag me at Modern Builds and at SemiExact on Instagram. And bonus, this bed breaks apart, stows and moves really easily. So if that's convenient to you, awesome. 
And I'm really not trying to discourage anybody from building their own brackets. If you are set up to weld and you've got the time, I say go for it. But I just know so many people don't have the equipment, the time, or the interest to make these. And I'm just really proud of the quality and the price that we're able to offer at Semi-Exact. Today, we are running the pre-sale on the DIY box frame leg kits. We've got three different sizes and tons of colors to choose from, which will always be updated. And on semiexact.com, we don't just have these leg kits. My buddy Ben from Homemade Modern launched a DIY bed bracket of his own, and my buddy Chris just launched these DIY spider legs with a really cool taper. So that's it for me. I am just really excited about this semi-exact launch. If you wanna learn more, links are down in the description. And I appreciate you all a million percent. Without watching my videos, I wouldn't have any of these opportunities in business or furniture design, so I'm just very excited and grateful. So we'll see you next time on my...